Hello everybody, it's Haniki again and today I thought I would try something a little bit different which is to make a short tutorial on how to make YouTube thumbnails using GIMP. GIMP of course is an open source free to use uh, program which is similar to but not exactly the same as Photoshop. I've begun using it uh, recently. In the past I've had many years of Photoshop experience and uh, now I've switched over to GIMP because I no longer work in an industry where I have access to Photoshop. So I'm using GIMP and so far I'm finding it to be fantastic. It does take a little bit of a mind switch to switch over from thinking about Photoshop to thinking about GIMP, but it doesn't take too long and once you learn where things are, it's pretty fantastic. Anyway, to get started, I'm going to remake this thumbnail which I prepared earlier. Um, and to do so, we're going to start by creating a new canvas. So let's go to File, New. Now the size that we want to use is 1280 by 720, which is the recommended size for YouTube thumbnails, or if you wanted a larger size, you could also use 1920 by 1080. I prefer to use this size. This is the one I've been using so far and it's been fine for me. We also want to make sure that the resolution is 300 by 300 pixels per inch. Make sure it's per inch and not per millimeter. In RGB color and I've got the the background set to transparency. So let's just double check 1280 by 720. Okay now there it is. Alrighty, so the very first thing we're going to do is bring in a background image. So I have this one, this one which I have downloaded from freepix.com. I will show you the link in one second. I'm just going to drag it onto there. I'm going to hold control and wheel of the mouse to zoom out a bit. Now I'm going to resize this one using the resize tool click on the image holding down my spacebar to move it away from that little box and then I'm just going to drag it down till I see the size of the canvas and we're going to make sure that it's big enough now see one thing that I should have done and I will do in one second press enter to accept that. We're going to the move tool. I'm just going to place it there and it's clicking onto the edge of the boundary. Now one thing that I was going to do uh, and I will do it right now is, oops no that was the right one, this one. Guides, okay. So under image we're going to guides, we're going to say new guide by percentage, vertical at 100%. We're going to add a guide there. Do it again. Guides, new guides per, by percentage, horizontal 100%. Add a guide there. See this makes it easy to see where the edges are. I'm going to add another one. Guides by percent. There's probably an easier way to do this and I'm just crazy but as I said I recently started using this program and so this is how I'm doing things at the moment. So we're going vertical at 0%. Okay, so now we have guides all the way around the edges. I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm happy with the way our woman looks. I might move her down a wee bit from the top. Oh, I can't because she's clicked onto the edge. Okay, that is actually the edge of the boundary. So that's where she's going to be. She's not cut off there, that's fine. And now I want to get rid of this. So under layer, so under layer we're going to go layer to image size. There we go. So now it's cropped to the size of this image. Now I'm just going to save this. Save it as, 
I'm going to save it as YouTube thumbnail tutorial example and I'm going to call it number two because I already have a previous version of this but I don't want to delete it just now. Okay so that's the name of it up the top there. Okay okay now this one here I'm going to delete because nothing is on it. Delete the layer. This one here I'm going to change the name to model and now we're going to create a color palette before we go any further. So I'm going to detach my color palette from there and remove it. What we're going to do now is create a color palette for this image. So there's a couple of ways to get the palette going. We can either look in Windows, Dockable Dialogues, Palettes, or we could have gone to configure this tab, add a tab, palettes. All right, but I've just put it up and here it is. So now we're going to say create a new palette and we're going to call it thumbnail example. All right, so what, what happens next is we want to make sure that the foreground color is the color that we want to sample. So we go into foreground color, we click the little eyedropper and we choose a color. Say, so, yep, that is the foreground color. Then we say, create a new entry for the foreground color. There it is. And now we're going to choose another color. Now I want a sort of a coral color. Oh, what did I do there? I'm going to lock this background image so that doesn't happen again. So we're just going to lock it and now it shouldn't be able to move. All right, back to this. We're going to sample a coral color. So let's pick some. I'd like one that's a bit darker than that. Let's pick a nice bright coral color. Okay, so I'm going to go with that color, add it in, yep. And then we're going to have black and white, so I'm going to choose that color. And then I'm going to flip it and choose that color. So now if I wanted to, I could rename each of these here. I could say yellow. I could say coral. White. And there is a black there, not that you can see it, but anyway, black. Now I have the colors that I'm going to use. Right, so the very next thing I'm going to do to try and copy the one that I made before is I'm going to add a new layer. Here is add a new layer. And we're going to call it shape. Okay. So the shape that I'm going to create using the free select tool. In fact, I'm going to go out a little bit holding control and mouse wheel to zoom out just a little bit. Using the free select tool, I'm going to draw a slanted box. So we click, just choose the shape of our slant. Actually, I might move that over a bit more. I'm happy with that and we're just clicking outside the boundaries okay and now you can see there's the, the marching ants which means that there is a selection there now we're going to go to our coral color and drop it in there that is a slightly different coral color than before and what we can do about that 
is we can change the hue. Change the hue till it's a bit more. Oh. A bit more bright. That's not too bad. And while we're at it, we're going to create. Well, we're going to add that to our palette just to make sure. So we're choosing the sample so that it is the foreground color, and we're going to say add it, and then we're going to delete that one and call that one coral. All right, so now we've got our updated color, which is a bit more. I mean, it's not exactly the same, but eh, I'm happy with that. So there is our box and now I am going to lock it so that I don't move it around by mistake. And we're going to say select none. Okay. So now I'm going to add a guideline at the visual center of this box. Now it's not the exact center. Remembering that this part is wider than that part. So it's just like a happy medium between the two. We can always change it if it's not right. So the next thing I'm going to do is some text. So we're going to add a new layer. We're going to call it text. And we're going to go in here. The font that I've decided to use is band shrift, bold condensed currently at 100 pixels in white, center justified and all of these things set to zero for now. That's the various, the various spacing and kerning and stuff. But for now, we'll just go with this one. Okay, so I'm going to put it in capitals and say how to make then I'm going to make a separate text box YouTube thumbnails I'm actually going to now if I spell it wrong don't worry I'll fix it and another text box using GIMP Okay, let's have a look how to make YouTube thumbnails using GIMP. Okay, so the reason I have got this line here is because now I'm going to grab each one and I'm going to click it. See that little plus there in the middle? That's what's clicking to the line. And we're going to readjust it again later, so don't worry. Oops, that didn't work, did it? Now we want this one to be bigger. So we're going to go back into text edit. We're going to select all and we're going to say 130. That seems to be fine. And we're going to change the color of this one to black. Make sure it's still centered, which it's not. Okay, so before I go too much further, I'm going to make another text box which needs to be under the one that says YouTube and it's going to be under the one that says YouTube, we're going to make A highlighted box. So choosing our yellow color, there it is, and choosing rectangle. We're going to make a rectangle and we're going to adjust it to make sure it's a nice size.
and then we're going to take this color and drop it in there okay select none now what I'm going to do is go to the alignment tool and I'm going to click on the word YouTube thumbnail and then shift click on oh, what happened there so what's going on here is this yellow box is actually as big as the entire selection so that's not what we want what we want to do is crop it down to the size of the content so we're going to say make sure we're on text box we're going to say the layer crop it to content there we go now our marching ants are around the size of the yellow box instead of the size of the entire frame now this should work better all right so let's go into alignment tool we're going to click on that box there we go and shift and also click on the word YouTube thumbnails okay so those two things are now selected and we're going to say center them in both directions okay and now I'm going to click on the word what's going on here I'm going to click on the word and I'm going to move it down a little bit because come on now let's not be like that there we go I'm going to move it down a little bit so that it is visually centered how do we like the look of that all right the reason for that is that fonts they make room for, for parts that go up and parts that go down in the lower case so sometimes the top and the bottom isn't always exactly the same so you might have to move it visually like what I just did okay so now we need to center all these other words so we're going to well first of all I'm going to lock these two together so that is the text box and the one that says YouTube so they should be locked together now now we're going to click on that as our first choice and then we're going to click on these other ones that one and that one I'm going to say center them all so that move them slightly to make them centered nicely now I'm going to move this one down a little bit where is it I'm going to move this one down a little bit just so that it's visually the same as the one at the bottom okay I'm pretty happy with that now what I'm going to do is add some filters I'm going to go into filter light and shadow long shadow I'm going to change the color to black I'm going to change it so that it is fading with a fixed length I'm going to change the length to 30 and the opacity to 50 so it's just a hint okay and then the one that says using GIMP this one I'm going to repeat the long shadow there it is again and on the text box this yellow box I'm going to repeat the long shadow okay that all looks okay 
Now I'm going to add the little gimp dude, this one, his name is Wilbur and I found out recently that he lives here in the brush palette. Look there he is at the bottom of the brush palette. Okay, so first of all, before I do that, I should add him on to a new layer. So here's a new layer. We're going to call him Wilbur. That's the layer we're on. And we're going to get Wilbur and we're going to go plonk. Oh, what? This layer. There we go. Now he's very big very big so we're going to resize him using the resize tool drag him down a bit more I want to put him here let's line him up with the bottom there And then I'm going to connect here. Why is it called drop buffer? We're going to call him Wilbur. Ah, I see it's doing this again. So Wilbur's there. He's not here. We're going to get rid of this layer that doesn't mean anything. And here is Wilbur. We're going to connect him to the word using GIMP. So he's connected to that word. Now let's move all of these things up a bit. In fact, I'm going to connect all of them together. Hopefully all of these will move for me. There we go. Now we're going to move it up a little bit. And now that we've done that, we're going to get rid of that and we're going to visually center them over a little bit so they feel like they're properly in the center of this coral box. Okay, well, I'm pretty happy with that. So what we're going to do now is save it make sure we don't lose it and then we are going to export it so we're going to say export as YouTube thumbnail tutorial example 2.png and I've been using PNGs for this so that's fine export I don't change any of these things. So now that should now be in the place where my thumbnails are, which is here. And there it is. That is ready to load in to YouTube as the thumbnail. So what do you think of that? Okay, so a couple of points I'd like to make when when you're trying to decide on a design to use a good way to go about it is to go into YouTube and look at the thumbnails that your favorite youtubers use thumbnails that catch your eye thumbnails that you find exciting and colorful and that get your attention and look at the way they've done their thumbnails and you can borrow a few ideas from them, maybe the way they do their text, maybe the kind of colors they use. That's a good way to start. And then as you get to know what you're doing, of course, you're going to make changes so it becomes your own. But in the very beginning, why not look at some of the, the thumbnails that your favorite YouTubers make and see how they do them. Now, because I I'm using uh, GIMP, which is a open source free software. I am also using other things that are free. For instance, this image came from a website. 
this one, which is freepick.com. Freepick.com. And these, there's just hundreds of really nice quality free images that you can download. And the requirement is that you attribute the creator in your descriptions. So I'm going to be putting a link in my description about this picture that I downloaded and a link to freepick.com. And I'll also put a link to um, where I get fonts from, which is dafont.com, another free to download site. So I think that's it for me. I'm sorry if this was a bit all over the place. This is my very first tutorial for GIMP, but I hope that I um, was clear enough and that you are able to make something with that. And I would really love to see what you make if you want to leave me a link in the comments so I can have a look. If this was useful to you, please can you like and subscribe so I can get my algorithm going and spread the word. And if you have any questions, please do ask in the comments and I will do my very best to answer and help you with any questions you might have. I do intend to make more GIMP tutorials as soon as possible, just so that you can come along with me on my journey in learning these new softwares in order to make nicer branding and presentation here on YouTube. Well, that's it from me, Haneke, and thank you very much for watching my tutorial, and I hope to see you again on my next tutorial. Until then, see you later.